Howdy folks, I'm Mr. Ryan and uh, I help people with math here at RCA and what I'm going to talk about today just briefly I'm just going to do a brief little video on reading a ruler on how to read a ruler or how to use a ruler either way um, so rulers uh, here's an example right here probably maybe you're, you have one in front of you possibly because you're about to work on a project that involves a ruler but you know here's a typical 19 cent target ruler um, uh, rulers measure distance that's the main key and what we have to understand is now distance is the probably one of the most basic things that you can measure uh, in the physical world that we have there's lots of things that you can measure physically then there are other things that aren't necessarily physical that you can measure but uh, but stuff you know like you know, houses and cars and people, you know, we measure their uh, distance qualities, like their height, um, or a car, how long it is, or a box, how deep it is. And all of those qualities about stuff uh, is a distance. For example, your phone probably has a particular thickness, you know, and, and some cell phone companies are very fond of saying, oh, we have the smallest, you know, the thinnest phone. It takes up the less space in your life, okay? That is a distance. And so rulers are one of the most basic tools in the world for measuring distance. However, there's a problem that I have noticed over the years of teaching math uh, that some people have uh, a, a couple issues with uh, measuring distance with understanding how to measure distance and I'm going to go over those one or two uh, issues and then after that we're going to talk about how to read a ruler so the two main issues uh, are um, well it's hard to describe it but one of them is is dealing with fractions the other one is knowing how to count distances and related to the idea of counting distances is a problem that a lot of people have uh, that I like to address using my, my hand, okay? So, um, so this is my right hand, okay? And I have five fingers on my right hand. But the thing is, fingers themselves, okay, are not what I'm looking to measure. I'm actually looking to measure how, not how many fingers I have, but how many spaces I have between my fingers. So if you look at my hand here, you'll see that there are one, two, three, four spaces between my, uh, not my hands, between my fingers. Okay, so even though I have five fingers, I have four spaces between my fingers. And that's one of the things that you need to understand when measuring distance, you're not measuring how many marks there are, you're measuring how much space there is between the marks. So if I wanted to measure the spaces between my fingers, I wouldn't say, well, here's one space, two spaces, three spaces, four spaces, five spaces. No, I would say there is one space, two spaces, three spaces, four spaces. Okay? Now it's going to, I think you're going to understand why I just did that in just a second. So here's what I have. I have a bunch of marks up on the board here, starting here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight marks, okay? Each one of these marks is one foot apart. So the distance from here to here is one foot, okay? And the distance from here to here is one foot, and from here to here is one foot. And so let's say that I want to know how far it is from here all the way over to here. So you're looking at it, and let's measure the distance. Now, the, the distance, the distance is how far it is from here to here. So we're not going to, so we can count the distance, because each one of these is one foot. We can count how many feet it is from here to over there. But here's what a lot of people do. Here's what a lot of people do that, where the mistake comes in. When they start counting the distance, when they put their finger here to start counting the distance, they say one. So they say one. The distance is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that is incorrect. The distance is not eight. We'll see in just a second what the distance is. 
See here, when you're at the very first mark, that's the beginning of the distance. And at the beginning of the distance, wherever you're starting, there is zero distance. You haven't gone anywhere. If I want to know how far it is from here over to here, at my starting place, I have not covered any distance yet. So I'm at zero. So here, when you're here, you have to say zero distance or zero feet. Then we have just covered one foot, then two feet, three, four, five, six, seven. And so the distance from over here to over here is seven feet. Okay, so it's the same thing on a ruler. Let's say that you, let's erase all this. Let's say that you have a ruler and you want to know how long something is. I don't know. Let's say that you have a, a piece of, I don't know. Let's say that you have a, a blue thing that's about this long, right? Okay. Well, if you put the ruler next to it and you start here, you're not going to say one, two, three, four inches long. Okay, in fact, the ruler, you can see, if it's starting here, you can see it ends at the three here, it's about three inches long. From here, you would say zero, one, two, three. Okay, so because we're measuring a distance. This is one inch, this is two, another inch, and this is a third inch. Okay, so let's remember that when we're, when we're measuring. The second consideration the second issue that people have, an, have a problem with is fractions. Because rulers have all these, little, all these little hash marks on them, right? These little hash marks that tell you portions of inches. So, yeah, sure, one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, that's easy. But what about the little hash marks? What about the fractions of inches? Well, you need to understand something about a fraction. Let's say we start off with one half, the fraction one half. Most people are okay with the fraction one half, okay? That's half the distance or half the amount. Here's what you need to understand. So we call that the numerator, and we call that the bottom number in the fraction, the denominator, right? Denominator, okay. So here's the deal. The value of the fraction gets larger as the numerator goes up in value. So the fraction becomes larger, the overall value becomes larger as the numerator increases. Okay? So if we then make this 2 over 2, that's larger than 1 over 2. If we make it 3 over 2, that's even larger. Okay? And then, in the same way, if the numerator decreases, gets smaller, for example, if we go from 7 eighths to 6 eighths to 5 eighths, these numbers are getting smaller because the numerator is getting smaller. Well, that's easy to understand. Most people are okay with that, okay? But what a lot of people have an issue with is this. Did you know that when the denominator gets larger, the value, the number itself, the value of the fraction actually gets smaller. So, if we start with one half, if we go to one third, one third is smaller than one half because the denominator got larger. One fourth is smaller than one third, one fifth is smaller than one fourth. Okay, until we get to, let's say, one one hundredth is even smaller, one one thousandth is an even smaller bit of a number. Okay, so let's start with that. Because what we do is we usually break a, a ruler, a ruler is broken up into halves and fourths and eighths and even one sixteenths. Okay, now I'm not sure if you know this, but did you know on a ruler, um, the 
size of the fraction is indicated by the length of the hash mark. Watch this. We're going to, the first way that an inch is broken up is usually broken up from one inch into one fourth of an inch. Okay, so here's what we do. We're going to draw a hash mark there and there and there. Okay, and here's what it means. One fourth, a fourth of an inch, one fourth inch. Okay, one fourth of an inch means that you have taken the inch and you have broken it up into four pieces. So now look, here we have the inch from here to here, and we've broken it up into one, two, three, four equal pieces, kind of like taking a cake and cutting it into four equal pieces. That is one out of four or one fourth. Okay, so this is one fourth of an inch. Now, something you need to just, or so this one right here, as you're counting on here, see there's no number next to these little hash marks. And the reason there's no number is because there's too many little hash marks and numbers are too large to write. Now they could write little tiny numbers, they could make the numbers this small, but you wouldn't be able to read them on the ruler. It would be very difficult to read them. So what you have to do is you have to practice using a ruler to get used to knowing the lengths that you're seeing. But these next longer lines here are the fourth lines. Okay, that breaks it up into one, two, three, four. And so from here, from the, the end, or it's the same thing here, between one and two, you'll see that it's broken up into four pieces. There we go. And the same thing between two and three. It's broken up into four pieces. And the same thing from three to four. It's broken up into four pieces. There we go. Okay, broken up into four pieces. Now notice the inch lines are longer than the fourth lines. Okay, that's because the whole numbers are a larger fraction. That's one out of one. These are one out of four. So the next ones we're going to do are one out of eight. The larger the denominator gets, the smaller the piece, and the smaller the piece, the shorter the line on the ruler. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to look at all the similarly uh, le similar length lines, and that's what you count along. So here, this is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and then one. One and one fourth, one and two fourths, one and three fourths, two inches. Two inches, two and one fourth, two and two fourths. Now I keep saying two fourths, but what you have to understand is that we never say two fourths. Even though it is one, two fourths, two fourths is actually a fraction that can be reduced to one half. So this, this line right here is always the one half inch line. So we have one fourth of an inch, one half an, of an inch, three fourths of an inch, one inch. One and one fourth, one and one half, one and three fourths, two inches, okay? So then we're going to break it up even more. I'm going to use a different color now. And I hope, I know this video is probably longer than I wanted it to be, but you know, well, you know. All right, so now we're going to break it up into eighths. And so we're going to make the lines a little bit shorter than the fourths. Two. And here's what we're going to have. And now if you count the spaces, you're not counting, you're not counting the lines, you're counting the spaces. There's one space. And, and when you use these shorter lines, these longer lines are included. Okay? These shorter lines are just extra lines to make the pieces smaller. Okay? But you're going to count in between all of the lines now. There's one space, two spaces, three spaces, four spaces, five spaces, six spaces, seven spaces, eight spaces. That makes that, the, all those measures one-eighth of an inch. And so this first space here is one-eighth of an inch. One-eighth. Then 
from here over to here would be two eighths, but we don't call it two eighths. Okay, two eighths can be reduced to one fourth, and we already learned this is one fourth of an inch. Like two minutes ago, I just said that's one fourth of an inch, right? So, but if, but an interesting way to understand it, if you count it as two eighths, it can help you understand the fact that the next one is three eighths. So it's okay to count it as one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and then this becomes eight eighths, eight over eight. And you may remember from your math class that eight over eight equals one, okay? I, I, don't, I hope I'm not going too fast here, but I'm just trying to help you understand all these little marks on a ruler, okay? So then we've got, so now, and also notice that these were the one-fourth lines, and then we, we drew in the one-eighth lines. Every time we cut a, um, a distance in half, what we do is we double the denominator. So four doubled to eight. So now what we're going to do is we're now going to put in the next level of line, which is, means we're going to double 8. And what's 8 times 2? It's 16. So now these, what we're going to put in right now, are the 1 16th hash marks. And because they're even smaller, remember, the denominator got larger, so the piece got smaller. And because the little pieces are smaller, we're going to use even smaller hash marks. We're going to put one halfway between here and here, then one halfway between here and here, one six, another, or a sixteenth mark, here, 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 and here. And now it would be the same thing over here. You'd have the one-eighths, and you'd also have the one-sixteenths. You'll see all these same lines between 1 and 2, between 2 and 3, and between 3 and 4. And so, there are how many spaces between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 spaces. And because there are 16 spaces, each one of these, as you go from here to here, is 1 16th. So, starting here, Grab. There we go. Starting here, if we wanted to know how long something was, if you put like a, um, I don't know, let's say that you were measuring a, a small piece of wood or the width of a piece of wood. Okay, you had a piece of wood that was that wide. Okay, and let's say that it's really long, but it's that wide. It goes from here to here. Okay, from here to here. We're going to measure it in sixteenths because the end of it is on one of the 16th lines. If the end of it was on one of the 8th lines, we would measure it in eighths. If the end of it was on one of the quarter lines, we would measure it in quarters, okay? But it's at, it's, it's at, a, at one of these little, little lines, one of the 16th lines, so we're gonna measure it in 16ths. So, starting here, we're gonna say zero, then, one sixteenth, two sixteenths, three sixteenths, four sixteenths, five sixteenths, six sixteenths, seven sixteenths, eight sixteenths, and lastly, nine sixteenths. And so this piece of wood, we would say that it is nine sixteenths of an inch wide. Okay, now if it happened to be, let's say that it was, I don't know, let's say that the piece of wood started here and you, it went all the way over to here. And let me throw in some, let me throw over here, let me throw in some eighths. Okay, and let me throw in some sixteenths. Here, here, here. Here, 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 and here. And let's say that the width of this piece of wood, or let's say it's the length of a piece of wood. 
let's say it goes all the way over to here, just short of three inches, just short of three inches. Now, some people might be tempted to say, oh, it's three inches long. Now that's fine for approximation, but if you need a precise measure, if you need to know precisely how long that piece of wood is, it's just a little too long there. If you need to know precisely how long this piece of wood is, then you would need to stop at this line here. And what you would do is this. You don't need to count all the sixteenths here. You can count whole numbers up until you get to where it's between two whole numbers. So we're going to say that this piece of wood is from here, zero, one, two inches, two inches long, but not two inches, it's a little longer. Two and one sixteenth, two sixteenths, three sixteenths, four sixteenths, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen sixteenths. And so this piece of wood is two and fifteen sixteenths of an inch. I hope this helps a little bit. And um, you can come ask me more questions. I'll probably make some more videos on uh, more advanced skills on reading a ruler. I know that sounds ridiculous to some people, but trust me when I say that a ruler is an excellent tool. Um, tape measure, these, these are the same kinds of ideas you can use on a tape measure. Uh, just let me know if you have any questions. Uh, good luck.